tasked with obliterating enemy forces, supporting clone troopers on the battlefield, and reinforcing strategic control. The all-terrain tactical enforcer was an assault walker packing an immense punch, with four frontal and two rearward anti-personnel laser turrets, not to mention an enormous heavy projectile cannon. The ATTE could decimate slow-moving aircraft and faster line-of-sight targets alike. Moreover, its sure-footed six-legged stance, which was inspired by the sturdy form of Rothana's arctic horny Welmer, allowed the vehicle to cross narrow crevices and ascend even the most rugged of slopes. And while well, they were rather slow by nature, with a top land speed of 60 km per hour, ATTEs often rode low altitude assault transport carriers for rapid deployment. They also travelled at a much faster rate upon dispersing their two squads of 10 clone troopers and even the IM-6 battlefield medical droid stowed away in an emergency locker. Unfortunately, at least by the time of the Battle of Geonosis, the tank's crew of one pilot, one spotter and five gunners all had to don full clone trooper armour, which dramatically reduced their movement. Purposefully subcontracted to Rathana Heavy Engineering due to a workforce famed for its diligence, ATTEs were mass produced in immense underground factories and honeycombed orbital shipyards. The local subsidiary of Kuwait Drive Yards, whilst home to a star system free from Trade Federation espionage, was not immune to separatist bombardments. In fact, both a corporate security starfleet and inventively deployed landmines in Rothana's inbound hyperlanes had to work coherently to protect the valuable vehicles. Due to such risk and high expense, each assault walker was built to last. Firstly, each came equipped with fuel for 500 kilometers of walking, as well as three weeks worth of air and rations. Secondly, ATTEs, unlike the high velocity exhaust of speeders and starships that were stifled by particle shields, simply utilized surface traction. And thirdly, as natural grounding prevented damage from the same energy discharges flying crafts were exposed to when leaping towards shield interfaces. All in all, the ATTE was an extremely well armed and well armoured tank, so much so that its conductive exterior spread the heat of enemy fire to minimise penetration, making it almost immune to the likes of electromagnetic pulse weapons and ion cannon fire. A persistently formidable presence on the battlefield, the ATTE possessed valuable territory and equalised the struggle between clone soldiers and separatist battle droids, but at a height of 5.7 metres and a length of 13.2 metres, it was somewhat small in comparison to the vehicles it would later inspire. In fact, designs such as the towering all-terrain armoured transport and all-terrain heavy enforcer incorporated hulls raised above the reach of exploding mines, giving them a greater vantage for their powerful energy weapons. So with that in mind, which of the aforementioned walkers do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. If you've learned something new from today, Today's video, be sure to leave a like. To help out the channel that's a little bit extra, please do consider pledging to our Patreon page. And for all things inside Star Wars, press that subscribe button and notification bell. Thanks for watching.